Hi and welcome to the first video of my stem cell biology series. In this video, we will be talking about some basic and key concepts of stem cells, including what they are, what are the different types of stem cells, and how they are applied in science. Starting from what are stem cells? Three properties can be used to define stem cells. First, these are unspecialized or undifferentiated cells. This means that they are not of any particular type. For example, the cells on your skin are called epidermal, brain cells are called neurons, and so on. Stem cells, however, do not belong to any of these categories. These are round cells with a large nucleus that do not perform any specific function. The second property is their ability to renew. Stem cells can proliferate and give rise to more undifferentiated cells without losing their ability to divide or reaching senescence. The third property is the ability of, the, of these stem cells to differentiate into other cell types. That is, these stem cells can convert from an unspecialized state to a specialized functional cell type. For example, a neuron, blood cells, or muscle cells, or practically any other cell type. Functional cells lack this ability and cannot change from one form to the other and are called differentiated cells. Stem cells differentiate into other cell types by switching genes on and off and selectively expressing these genes or proteins of the particular cell type they want to differentiate into. Before moving on and discussing more about stem cells, I would like to cover a little bit about developmental biology. After an egg is fertilized, a single cell stage called zygote is formed. This undergoes rapid successive divisions forming a 2, 4, 8 and 16 cell stage within the first 3 days of zygote formation. An embryo with 32 to 64 cells is called morella. Cells in the morella then split into two layers and form the outer layer which is called the trophoblast and the inner layer which is called the inner cell mass. The trophoblast gives rise to the placenta which helps in the implantation of the embryo. The inner cell mass on the other hand undergoes gastrulation and, form, and forms the gastrula with three distinct layers. The outermost layer is called the ectoderm, the middle layer is called the mesoderm and the innermost layer is called the endoderm. These are called the germ layers and give rise to different organ systems. For example, the endoderm gives rise to lungs and digestive system. The mesoderm gives rise to bone marrow, bone, cartilage, heart, blood vessels, blood, and many other organs. And then finally, the ectoderm gives rise to the central nervous system, which is the brain and the spinal cord, eyes, and skin. So in all of this, where do stem cells come in? Well, the blastocyst, specifically the inner cell mass of the blastocyst, form stem cells. And these stem cells give rise to all these different organ types in a body. Before moving on to the different types of stem cells, I would like to discuss a few key terms very commonly used in stem cell biology. The first is potency. Potency is the ability of a cell to give rise to different types of cells. For example, a cell can give rise to one type of cell or it can give rise to 20 different types of cells. And this varying degrees of an ability of a cell to give rise to different cell types is called potency. Next is differentiation. This is the ability of a cell to become specialized and perform a specific function. This is usually carried out by, the, by changing the gene expression and protein expression in different cell types. Plasticity is the ability of a differentiated cell to differentiate into another cell type. For example, a functional cell from the pancreas cannot differentiate into a neuron. On the other hand, vascular mural cells that form the outer layer of the blood vessels can convert into fibroblasts in case of an injury, which means that the vascular mural cells are more plastic than pancreatic cells. Then we have progenitor cells. These are differentiated cells that can give rise to other cell types and have high proliferative abilities. They reside in tissues in a quiescent stage and upon injury they start dividing. 
how they are different from stem cells is that stem cells are unspecialized cells and progenitor cells are already differentiated somewhat specialized cells that further give rise to different types of cells next is clonogenicity which is the ability of a cell to divide into the same cell type which is genetically identical and does not lose its ability to proliferate and finally cell lineage this refers to all the different cell types a stem cell or any other cell undergoes to form a specialized cell and together all the different stages a cell undergoes to form the final cell type is called the cell lineage for example for a cell to become a macrophage a cell from the mesodermal layer is differentiated into a hematopoietic stem cell which differentiates into a common myeloid progenitor cell which then differentiates into a myeloblast that is differentiated into a monocyte which then becomes a mature macrophage so all the cells that i just mentioned starting from the hematopoietic stem cell to the macrophage is called the lineage of the macrophage if we talk about the different types of stem cells we can characterize them in two ways the first is potency and the second is source talking about potency the first kind is totipotent stem cells these are derived from one to three day old embryos and can differentiate into any other cell type in the body the next is pluripotent stem cells similar to the totipotent stem cells these are also derived from the embryo but from the inner cell mass of the blastocyst these stem cells can differentiate into all cell types of the organism except for the extra embryonic layer which is the placenta as the trophoblast cells as discussed before gives rise to the placenta and the inner cell mass have now lost this ability to differentiate into the extra embryonic layers the next is multipotent stem cells these are found in the later stages of development in the fetus and in adults for example the hematopoietic stem cell which gives rise to different blood cells including granulocytes t cells b cells erythrocytes and more is a multipotent stem cell oligopotent stem cells are usually found in adults that is fully developed organisms after birth in stem cell biology when we say adult stem cells it means after birth and it does not necessarily mean a person who is above 18 it could be a child or an infant but the stem cells derived from any organism after birth will be considered adult stem cells so these oligopotent stem cells reside in tissues in a quiescent state and can divide and differentiate into two to five different cell types that are found in the tissue or the organ where they are homed for example an intrahepatic stem cell of the liver can give rise to hepatocytes and bile duct epithelial cells and finally unipotent stem cells are those that can only differentiate into one specific cell type but have a high proliferation ability for example muscle stem cells that re-enter the cell cycle upon injury divide and differentiate into myocytes the other way of characterizing stem cells is by source stem cells derived from embryos at a pre-implantation stage are called embryonic stem cells these are pluripotent or totipotent However, they do pose a lot of ethical questions since isolating embryonic stem cells results in the death of the embryo. Next, we have fetal stem cells which are usually multipotent and can be derived from fetal blood, kidney, liver or other organs. And then we have cord blood stem cells which are derived from the umbilical cord blood after an organism is born. These are easy to isolate and are readily available. Cord blood is also known to be abundant in hematopoietic stem cells and mesenchymal stem cells and the collection method is non-invasive and hence the ethical issues are a lot less. Finally, we have the adult stem cells that reside in tissues in a quiescent state and are extremely rare. They can range from multipotent stem cells like hematopoietic or unipotent like muscle cells. However, these are very difficult to isolate as they are very rare but they give rise to patient specific stem cells which reduce a lot of problems while delivering a cell therapy 
Additionally, a new type of stem cell called induced pluripotent stem cell was discovered in 2006 by Shinya Yamanaka. He found four transcription factors, OCT4, KLF4, CMYK, and SOX2, which are expressed in embryonic stem cells, and these four transcription factors can be used to achieve pluripotency in adult fully differentiated cells, which can then be differentiated into any other desired cell type. This allows the development of patient specific cells for treatment overcoming the sparsity of stem cells in adult bodies thus stem cells are promising for various cell therapies and can theoretically be applied for different diseases ranging from stroke to cardiovascular diabetes and also cancers these therapies can be autologous which means cells from a patient can be taken and modified and put back into the same patient for example CAR T cell therapy for various cancers wherein T cells from a patient are isolated made to express a tumor specific receptor and then these modified T cells are injected back into the patient and these modified T cells can then actively target cancer cells which had previously escaped immune attack the second type of cell therapy is allogenic cell therapy which refers to cells from an organism that will be used to treat other individuals of the same species one of the clinically approved cell therapy is the use of cord blood derived hematopoietic progenitor cells from a donor to treat leukemia lymphoma and other genetic and acquired blood related diseases of course a lot of research is required and is being carried out stem cell therapy is an emerging field and has a lot of promise for targeting multiple different diseases In this video I will not be going into more detail about cell therapies and in the next video I will be discussing in depth about important cell signaling pathways in stem cell biology and how they are targeted in cell therapies